for my artist talk, I thought I'd take you through on a walk through the landscape that inspires me. I've had this piece of land for quite a few years, but about two years ago, we renovated a house here and moved here. So this is my backyard now. Love standing on top of the hills and looking down the coolies. A beautiful fall day. Trees are turning beautiful yellows and greens. We've had a drought this year, so it's been pretty dry, but we had a couple inches a few weeks ago. It's greened things up a little bit. Last night we had a nice little rain. Feels nice and damp today. Take a walk along the grass. Such beautiful patterns. I grew up in a farm, Glentworth, in southern Saskatchewan. A little farm. We grew grains. Had a few pigs and chickens and geese and cows. Primarily a grain farm. The land was pretty flat. Lots of sky, your typical Saskatchewan landscape. Wheat fields. Very little natural prairie. It had all been pretty much broke to grow crops. But south of Glentworth, the landscape changed dramatically. It was all hills and coolies, trees. And every summer we would go south to pick Saskatoons. It was always so much fun, even though we were supposed to work and get our Saskatoons. It was a lot of fun to go through the trees and on the prairie and look for flowers. In the elementary school, we would, last day of school, we would go to a classmate's pasture and it was like this. We would run up and down the hills and through the coolies, just be free. Get a little lost in the trees and find our way out. It was a lot of fun. to find flowers this year. They flowered but not as much as they did before when it rains. Got some nice yellow asters though. It's like finding a treasure when you find flowers. Any little jewels. Some white asters. kind of plentiful right now. We've had such nice weather. I like the sound it makes when you walk through the grass. Some of this has been broke and some hasn't. The hills are of course all natural prairie. Just this little area is a hay field. A couple of weeks ago, I had a knock on the door and it was some scientists and they wanted permission to look for fossils in our pasture here. Find a lot of fossils in this area. Find a lot of petrified wood. Some pieces are so big you have to move them with a tractor. 
and I went on a little hike with them to a hilltop where there was exposed rocks and I'd found fossils. I found a, a fairly large one about 10 inches long. They told me it was probably from a mastodon. So I was very excited about that. But they looked around on the hilltop and found very tiny little fossils. They said were probably horses teeth and different grass grazers little imprints of shells on rocks. It was surprising to me. I didn't realize that there were just so many fossils just right, just right on the ground. Just, now I know a little bit more what to look for when I go out. It's pretty much anywhere you look. There's probably little fossils here that I could pick up. So many beautiful trees here. Pretty close to the town of Rockland. It's in the distance. It's kind of an artistic community. We have three or four or more artists who have studios and galleries in town. So it's always a might be a nice trip if you're wanting to go to the Sherniac and Assiniboia. Head down to Rockland and the Grasslands National Park. It's about a half an hour or so away. Like a nice weekend. I'm gonna head down the valley and look at some different vegetation. We've seen a lot of the grass, the beautiful texture, the yellows and greens, and almost to white. I'll head down and see what else inspires me. I have a lot of strong lines in my paintings. I use a different colored outline for each painting, depending on how I felt that day, what the mood, what I felt the mood was in the painting. I'm never gonna know what's gonna strike me as a composition that I like. I do a lot of flowers. I get a lot of prairie lily end of June, early July. That's probably the biggest, showiest flower. Prairie roses. Spring, we get lots of crocuses. Actually, yesterday I was out and I actually found a crocus growing. I've seen that before. Crocuses sometimes will, they get some rain, they'll flower again in the fall when they didn't do so well in the spring. Grasses are so varied. Beautiful. Brome wheat grasses. So I like to stand on top of a hill and look down, but I also like to, to look up the hills. The contours against the sky. We have quite a pretty sky today too, because we we have a lot of clouds, the remnants of the rain clouds heading north. The hillsides are beautiful with cinquefoil and snowberry. Cactus grow in the hilltops. The prickly pear and pincushion and Beautiful waxy yellow and purple flowers. I'm going to paint those one day. I've done a lot of lilies and roses, crocuses. I like some of the plants when they go to seed. A crocus, when it goes to seed, has such a funny mop of seeds. It's fun to paint. Sometimes we get a little splash of color. You get green on green and then you'll get a brilliant yellow, the rabbit bush. And the blue-green foliage. We 
There's some insects flying. They have a lot of grasshoppers and it's kind of cricket season. Getting some nice shadows today. I like to get into the foliage and into the trees a bit. You can get really lost in there where you can't hardly get out. It's so thick. I find the ground. So many variations of shapes with the grasses and plants, leaves. I find in some ways, Saskatchewan's maybe been depicted as boring and the colors are dull and things flat and and we're all about the sky. And then we do a beautiful sky. But I guess maybe with my farming and ranching background, I just find the land is more interesting to me. A lot of times I don't even put sky in a painting. It's really like the land. Having cattle, we find the grass is very important, taking care of the land. The colors are very brilliant there. A lot of paintings, they've been kind of pastel -y and light, but I find the colors really vivid. A few years ago, I had cataract surgery. I've had really poor eyesight my whole life, and I could correct it mostly with glasses. But a lot of my paintings I've noticed before my surgery were more flat areas of color. And now I've been adding a lot more texture and I can see it a lot more. And the colors have even gotten brighter. It's been really, really nice to, to be able to see better. And not have to wear such heavy, thick glasses. Try and fool with contacts. I do trees, I, I really pay attention to the outline and add the, just the general shape and add the colors in. That's a beautiful foliage. See how thick it is in there. The trees are starting to change into beautiful colors. I'll often pick one or two and put them in my pocket so I can use it later and look at it in my studio. Get some ideas for color. I see different plants I've never seen before and try and go back and look them up and, and try and remember later on what they were. I know the flower is fairly good, but a lot of the grasses and trees, I'm, I'm just learning some of the shrubs. Beautiful play of the shadows on the grass. nice coming down the valley. It's a lot harder going back up. The hills are pretty steep. take a lot of pictures when I go along so that I can reference them to my paintings. I'll probably change the composition sometimes. I'm not always true to the landscape. A lot of times I think I exaggerate the colors. Let me find a little color somewhere 
unusual and use it in a bigger way in a painting. We're really getting a nice shadow in the back. The hills are looking almost bluish. It's really silent here today with just the few insects flying around. A lot of rabbit bush and sage is growing on the hillside. The sage. This is flowering. Going to seed. Really nice sandstone rocks, plentiful in this pasture. Get some beautiful colors, things growing on them. Beautiful oranges and blacks and grays and sometimes green. I'll just sit on a hillside and and think about what I'd like to paint. Don't often come out and work right from the directly from the landscape. I like to work in my studio. Maybe I'm just too lazy to bring all my paints out here, but maybe something I try in the future. Nice sink foil. A tiny blossom growing on one. So they're kind of they're pretty much finished for the year. A few a few down below. Or just yellow leaves maybe. See a lot of deer through here. White tail mule deer. Hear any today, but they're probably hiding in the trees. You might hear them go crashing through. I like to find a deer trail and go through the grass and trees. They seem to know the best way to go. Every day I come out, the colors are getting more fall-like. A lot of yellows and a little orange. We don't get the bright reds like they do down east, but we get some, but not, not on mass. Mostly we get just beautiful yellows and oranges. Some bushes that are really, some beautiful color in them. Love those oranges and reds. It's always been my favorite color since kindergarten or you know, grade one. My teacher would make let me have all the red sparkles I wanted. Red glitter. Grade three and four, we were together in one class. My teacher was Mrs. Panko, and she loved to do art. And she really uh, made me want to be an artist. Her sons were artists. And I did a picture. There was going to be an art show and she really praised it and put in the art show, but I didn't win anything, but it was enough that Mrs. Panko thought it was really good. From then on, I always wanted to be an artist. 
used to have a craft night once a week after school and I wasn't really supposed to stay but sometimes I would conveniently miss the bus and get to make some crafts. I was always making a mess. On Christmas my mom bought me a a box with acrylic paints and that was probably the best present I've ever got. Really appreciated it. Some rocks with some beautiful greens on it. Orange. Getting some mosquitoes. I didn't think there'd be any. Usually I this summer I'd go for a hike and I'd be covered in wood ticks, but I don't know if it's the right weather, it's just later. I haven't been getting any lately, so that's good. Find another path through the trees. Again, the foliage on the ground is so good and the trees just look amazing, the shapes. Nice choke cherries. There's Saskatoon in here too, but we had an ice storm right during the when they were flowering and we just didn't have any Saskatoons this year, but I always go picking. I still like to pick Saskatoons and maybe pick a few choke cherries yet. Some more beautiful colors. I'll take one of those leaves too. Um, Choke cherries look so kind of plain, but when you squish them, they have such a beautiful color. There's a lot of inspiration just in that one berry. Beautiful purples, reds. I always like going through this little path. I usually take this hike several times a week. I go different ways, different places, different times. Let's discover something new, new landscape. Here's some birds. Getting ready to go south. Summer's so fleeting. In the prairie, it's a beautiful tree all the way up trunk is so great with the grooves and texture and the color. Try not to trip. It's usually a tree on the ground I'll trip over when I'm walking along. I'm going through some Saskatoon without berries. Some nice more choke cherry. Here we've got some beautiful foliage. That would make a beautiful painting. I usually study this. Especially when we do, do a flower painting. I really want the plants around it. So many beautiful plants. And the sage smells really good when you rub it. Some beautiful fall color. Reds and purples. This is, I always feel like I'm going to Sleeping Beauty's castle from here. It's all hawthorn trees and the really long thorns. I've got some berries, nice red berries. They're not super tasty. They have a pit in there. 
little bit like apple, but I've heard some people used to make jelly out of them, but but I've never tried it. It's so peaceful. Sometimes you just get lost in time and space when you're out here. In the spring, deep in the trees, there'll be little violets. And then if you get lost in the trees and you don't know where you are, at least on the prairie, you can come out again onto a hillside and look around and find your way. We'll head up the hill. The grass is greener here. In some places. Just hear a hum of insects. It's like a little soundtrack. Beautiful contours of the hills in the background. The sage as we go up the hill and rabbit bush. A variety of plants, so unusual. Here, the rabbit bush is starting to go to fade and go to seed. It's going from that beautiful, brilliant yellow to a beautiful gold. Beautiful shapes. I had a friend who said, When it rains, the prairie blooms. This year, we didn't have much rain, so we didn't get a lot of blooming. But it's looking a little better right now with the rain we've had the last few weeks. And the fall flowers are seeing sunflowers again on the roadsides. Having a good sky day today. Very little wind. We usually have wind. I like to kind of show movement in my paintings because it's always moving on the prairies. Everything's moving in the wind. Animals going back and forth. Insects and birds. It's a nice little view of Brooklyn's elevator. I like to put modern elements in my paintings like trucks and Put, lately put some wind turbines in a painting. Kind of paint things as they are now, not as they were. Here's a beautiful spot here with a lot of beautiful rocks, unusual rock formations here. A flower in the summer grows here called a paintbrush. It's got a very unconventional bloom. I didn't see any this year, but they were really beautiful last year. More rocks blooming. Here's the rock formation I was talking about. It's one of my favorite places just to sit and think, dream. Almost looks like a man-made thing, but it's not. More rabbit bush. When you come over the hill to this beautiful landscape, again, it goes on for miles and miles.
There's some cows mooing. And there's a good view of Rockland. Well, thank you for coming along on this hike with me. Hope it gives you some inspiration. I think I'm gonna sit here for a little while and contemplate my next landscape. Hope I can do this beautiful scenery justice in my paintings. And we're gonna go on a studio tour of my new studio. So thank you. <laughs>